You pulled up because we were devising a plan to get you a check. You made a pact. This pact had nothing to do with her ever going upstairs. She was gonna get a great look by looking like she was my friend, coming to save the day, or coming to have my back, and get a check. You a liar! I'm not agreeing to her getting me no check. She, she didn't get me no check. In the morning when the sun starts to rise, so mama don't stress your mind. Nisha here. So today's video is my review of Love & Hip Hop New York Season 9 Episode 12. Before I get started, welcome to all of my new subscribers. What up to all of my oldies? I love having you guys here. You don't understand. If I could love you guys' comments that are always in my comment section, like always watching my videos, if I could love you guys a thousand times in the comments, I swear I would because you don't understand how you keep me going. You get what I'm saying? Like sometimes I'm like, look, I don't feel like it. But then I see a comment come across and they're like, oh, Nisha, I love this. Oh, Nisha, I love your commentary. Oh, Nisha, keep going. You know, when I get stuff like that, that keeps me doing these videos. So please keep it coming. And let's start with Alexis Sky and Solo Luchi Gucci. Now, listen, I am a little bit frustrated at the fact that Love and Hip Hop is trying to play on my intelligence. Now, if you guys have been following their personal lives or even if you uh, occasionally look at a blog or you watch YouTube every now and again, you'll see that Solo Lucci is the one that purchased the test for the paternity, okay? He is the one that had all of the login information and he did not make that available for Alexis Scott. So she literally had to hunt him down in order to get the results of the test, which had came in, but she wasn't even able to call in and get the results because everything was tied to his name and his information. We know this. Why the hell is Love and Hip Hop trying to make it seem like she's the one purchased the test, she's the one that got the results, and she's coming to this studio session or wherever the hell he was to deliver the results? I need y'all to stop acting like we don't follow their personal lives. I'm not on there like every day, but I'm just saying like I recall this story and now Love and Hip Hop is trying to make it seem like Alexa Sky is the one girl by and even when they did the scene, you can tell that the shit was rehearsed. It was forced and I'm just over. I'm over it. I'm over it. She got a little funk ass apology. That's what she wanted from him because she got tired of him claiming a baby that wasn't his. And let me tell you something. I thought that was odd as well. So we know it was for a storyline because who the hell claims a baby and the mama is telling you it's not your baby and you keep trying to claim the baby. On Yandy and Kim Bella. Now we know from last episode that they are on this Puerto Rico trip that was... Um, they were invited to this trip by Juju because she has an event and she wanted them to come. It turned into a semi-couples thing or whatever. We already know that, right? So now we have Kim Bella that's trying to make it seem like she's the prissy one. She's the good one in this book. Like she is always the one that's being mature. Why she has to be the one. You know what? I'm going to be the bigger person and I'm going to reach out to Yandy and I'm going to let her know that we can coexist. We don't have to keep having these frustrations. And I'm like, sis, where was this person in the beginning of the damn season? Because you started off childish as hell you were extremely immature you didn't want shit to do with yandy yandy kept trying to reach out to you and you kept shitting on her every time she extended the olive branch you broke that shit like every time and she was still trying to figure out like what is the issue now i know some people say that it was because she pulled up well even kim bella is saying that she pulled up to a birthday party and i guess some stuff was about to pop off but Yandy flipped the script, made it seem like she didn't call her. Now, honestly, I feel like, yes, Yandy, you probably did call her. And you wanted her to come. And you wanted her to uh, pop up, you know what I mean? You dropped the pin. You want her to pop up and just kind of whatever the hell y'all had planned. Because I don't remember watching that season. Y'all, I'm just over it. And I can't really embrace this new version of Kimbella Because, boo, like, you just two episodes ago was on some bullshit. Now, all of a sudden, because you got a ring... You became this new savior for love and hip hop and, and you're not about the drama and girl, bye. And I think that Yandy sees through this shit. And not only that, it's like, boo, you're not finna sit here and play with me. I can't take you serious. I can't take this new uh, woke 
version of Kim Bella. I can't take it serious. I'm sorry. That's just my opinion. And then for Maggie Mackie, you the reason why all of this frustration is going on on this trip. You the reason why. You brought it up to Yandy who got pissed off, took it personal, and then now all of a sudden she wants to go. Now, one thing I will say that I agree with when Kimbella said it was, listen, Yandy, if your ass don't want to be here and you don't want to coexist, you don't want to just have a good time because she invited us here. You don't want to just let bygones be bygones for her now, for this time. You don't want to do that. Take your ass home. You keep saying you want to be home with your kids. Just go home. We don't need negative Nancys here. Now, even though I don't agree that Kimbella is really, she has really turned over a new leaf. I will just say I agree with this. You know what I mean? Either we have a good time while we're here or you can go home. But we're not going to be sitting here moping and groaning because you feel like you don't want to be there. You're not really present. Rich Dollars and his daughter and the fact that, okay, first of all, let's go back to the baby mama. Now, he called the baby mama because she hadn't been answering his call. So all of a sudden she answers and then he... He's FaceTiming her and he's like, what's going on? I haven't talked to y'all. Well, she talks about how the public defender really not doing nothing for her in her case. And we all know that, you know, public defenders have too much on their plate. They're really not able to give the best they want to give. And, and a lot of people even say the public defenders actually work for the, um, or they work in opposite of what they supposed to be doing. Like they're trying to put your ass in jail. They're trying to get you to sign some time instead of trying to get you off. I don't know, y'all. Fortunately, I've never had to have one, so I don't do research on them. All I can say is, in this situation, his baby mom miracle is like, look, they're not working for me. What can I do? So then he's like, okay, so you're going to end up having to get a lawyer. And she's like, yeah, well, how much lawyer is? 18000 I think she said. He talking about he going to shoot at 8000 I said, man, you are real ass nigga, Rich. You are real. Like, you... You are not obligated to anything with this woman anymore, but yet you're still reaching your hand out and you're trying to help her whenever necessary. And I can do nothing but respect that. Then she tells him, well, your daughter is thinking about quitting school and she's losing weight and she's very stressed out. Ma'am, you want to know why your daughter is stressed out, ma'am? It's because you did some stuff that jeopardized your family and your freedom, which would make it to where you're not able to take care of your kids, your your the her siblings, okay? Which means that she was going to have to step up and take care of them. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, that's not her responsibility. She's still a child. She's in school. Yes, but listen, it happens all the damn time, okay? If you're old enough to watch the child, you become the child's guardian until situations and shit get better. And so, you know, Rich Dollars then, he hears this information. He's like, yo, no, we can't have that happen. And so then he flies her out and he's talking to his daughter, which start crying. And she's like, look, this is just too much for me. I can't do it. And then he's like, okay, I understand. Cause she said her 3.7 and dropped to 3.0 and she just can't focus. You know, she's failing and it's just too much for her. I feel bad for her because you can tell that she's really taking on a lot of the stuff that her mom did. And this is why as parents, we have to consider what we're doing at all times because our actions affect, whether directly or indirectly, it affects our children, okay? And so we really have to take that into consideration whenever we're doing stuff, you know what I mean? So then... Finally, Joe says, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put a ring on it. You know what I mean? Shorty backed that thing up one time for the one time in the bedroom. Okay? She made me fall in love with her all over again. And his re his reservations at first were that they hadn't been together that long. You know, they only been together three years. And, you know, it's not like Kimbella's situation where they were together for 10 years and he, you know, it was time to put a ring on it. Now, why he feels like longevity in a relationship equals marriage, I don't know. Because, like, I'm with Safari. Like, people get married whether it's been two months or 20 years. At any rate, he has already prepared, proposed to her, so they are getting married. And, you know, I mean, that's just them. I just hope... They live their best life. And that's it, guys. So go ahead and get into the comments and let me know what you thought about this episode. Until next time, bye. Yeah, low key and maybe high key. I've been peeped that you like.